Hey guys, I have a super exciting vlog for you today, but before we get into that, I want to do my shout outs from my last video, and that is Pauline White and EG Rodeo. Thank y'all so much for using my code and supporting the channel. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you tune in till the end to see how. We have a very jam-packed barn vlog so when i get there i turn kite out so he can have a good time grazing stretching his legs and everything and i also threw chester outside so he could graze and also walk around and stretch his legs and just be outside today i'm gonna try to hang scout a hay bag at the trailer if you follow me you know he's pretty fidgety so i wanted to see if this helped him at all so i put about a flag and a half of bermuda hay into this hay net and hung it at the trailer for him Once I get that hay net hung where I like it, I go get Scout and bring him back and I tie him to the trailer just using a daisy chain. It is my favorite knot, but I do loop the bottom in because he does know how to pull it out and just walk away from the trailer. Here he is enjoying his hay bag and I think this is gonna work. First thing I do is pick his feet. I want to make sure there's no rocks or anything uncomfortable in there and just get everything out. And before you ask, yes, he is missing a shoe. He threw it right before this ride, but the grind never stopped, so we still went and rode today. Now he is still shedding so much. I like to call him a woolly mammoth, you know that, if you've been watching me for a little bit. And the hair just keeps on coming, so I work really hard to try and get that hair off. I'd imagine it's really uncomfortable and very itchy, and I would want someone to get it off of me. So I take my time working on this, and I personally believe before you get on, you need to spend some time grooming your horse. I like to do it because you can look, see if there's any heat, anything abnormal going on, and you can catch things a lot quicker this way. So it lets you know exactly what their normal is, what their legs normally look like, what everything normally feels like, so you can detect something wrong much better. Now that I'm done using the Slick Easy, I go over with a soft brush to just dust him off. They are always so dusty, and to get anything else extra off, the Slick Easy does great bringing up the dirt and caked up mud and such up to the top of the coat and off.
I spray his tail with Cowboy Magic Super Body Shine, which is a detangler, and then brush his tail out. Alright, now that I have that all done, I'm going to throw on my tack. I use a classic equine build-up pad on him and my saddle is from Circle Y. And even though he is so tall, I still try my best to not slam that saddle on him. I'm literally the height of an Oompa Loompa, so if I can throw my saddle like that onto my 16.2 hand horse, I feel like anyone can. I pull those cinches down and start to tighten them up. As I am doing the back cinch, you will see me laughing. That's because he's become quite the chunky monkey, which I'm actually so thankful for. If you know what he looked like before, you know why. Here I scare him jumping into the frame, but I apologize. And I'm going to show off this cowhide hot head stalls breast collar. If you want to order one or any of the various prints they have, you can use my code Sadie5 and help support the channel and get a discount. Here's a closer look at all of my tack. It looks so good on him and now it is time to hop on. So I tighten the saddle before clipping his reins. I like to have them only clipped on one side for safety reasons. If not, he will throw his foot through the looped reins and melt down and in some cases this can cause a broken leg. I would think that the reins would break but the one time he did, they did not. So it's just very important to only keep one rein clipped unless you are on. I start by walking him around a lot before asking for a trot. We are just building him back up. Like I said, he's been off and I want to get him legged back up so I can take him to some races. So we walk, get that fluid in his joints warm before I ask him for a nice long trot and we trot for a while.
once I am done trotting this way, I turn him around, walk a little bit, and then ask for the same trot the other way. Once I am done trotting, I walk him and let him look at this tarp that he has decided is super scary. Try and show him that it's not going to kill him. He's going to be okay. And then we lope this direction. Again, once I'm done loping this way, I walk, turn around, and lope the other way. And that concludes his workout for today. So I hop off and I unclip one side of the reins and immediately loosen his cinches. I take him back to the trailer to attack him and it was kind of a battle to get the bit off while he was trying desperately to get a bite of hay, but I don't let them eat with bits in their mouth. So I tried to hurry to switch him back to the halter so he could get back to his snack. Once I am done pulling off all of that tack, I untie him and take him to put him out in the pasture so he can go stretch his legs, be a horse, graze, and roll, which is his favorite thing. Also decided he wanted to model a little bit while he was outside before he did his favorite thing which is roll and get all nasty again. He also went and got a good drink which I love to see and Kite was still chilling outside. I go and grab his hay bag because I'm gonna fill it up to put it in his stall and this begins our barn chores. I throw the bag down because I'm too lazy to carry it down and take it to the wash rack where I will spray it off. I mostly spray it off because of dust, but it also reduces the sugar content and it has plenty of other benefits. Plus, I think he just really likes wet hay better than dry hay. And you'll see all of my boots that I washed the day before hanging up in here. We will be taking those to the trailer very soon.
leave the bag hanging to let all of the excess water drip out and I start getting my boots that I sprayed off the day before so we can go take them to the trailer and even though they hung overnight some of them are still wet so we're gonna take them and put them on the hood of the truck in the sun and in the breeze to hopefully dry them off really quick and I am a boot addict so I have so many I can't help it okay I have to have every single color Here I'm very coordinated and don't drop a single boot. I don't know what you're talking about. I lay them all separate out onto the hood so that the sun can get to them and I leave them open. I do not roll them up during this so that all of the boot will be in the sun. part is so funny here i see if the camera is still recording and the boots still are giving me some trouble trying to fly off everywhere but i finally got them all laid out and i bring my own alfalfa from home so here i am hopping into the bed of the truck to throw that bag out i put it in what looks like a body bag but i swear it's alfalfa and it's so heavy so i drag it and chester hears me of course so he has to have a bite and he would not let me get away without doing that so i throw him just a little handful before continuing my journey of dragging this body bag i mean alfalfa bag to his stall where he again meets me and screams at me for food so i throw him some more so i can get these buckets out to soak the majority of his alfalfa this alfalfa is very dusty so i like to rinse it off uh, so he's not inhaling and eating all of that dust i really don't like that i try to avoid them getting dust in their lungs as much as i can Now that I have these two buckets full of alfalfa, I put them in the wash rack and fill up both buckets with water. And once I'm done with that, I let them sit there for a while while I go do something else. Now that those are good and soaking, I go to make Chester's feed bag. He needs one in the morning and of course he forces me to pay my feed bag tax. I can't get away without doing that. He gets one scoop of Purina Senior in the morning and then I put a Quinity powder in there. So you'll see me doing that here. It is really great for their hair and their skin and just everything. It's amino acids and I love it. And then I put on this powdered Omeprazole just because he is kind of prone to ulcers and we don't want him to be uncomfortable and I catch him drinking which I love to see I love to see them drinking and I want to make sure they're getting plenty of fluids this is also another reason I love to soak the alfalfa I pass by the alfalfa to go get Zorro please ignore the Christmas decorations and I didn't turn him out immediately when I got here because he doesn't love to stay out very long so I wanted to make sure he just got the right amount of time he needed and he wasn't going to be banging at the gate for me to get him and he was obviously very excited to get out he always brings the most chaos every single time so i like to get him out and let him run around and just get all of that energy out running to go get Chester riled up and I was thankful that Chester was ignoring him here. I thought that was going to be the end of it and he was just coming to see if I had food 
But no, once he realizes I do not have anything good to eat, he takes off out into the pasture and him and Zoro just have a good time. So that is my cue to go get that alfalfa and put it in his grazer to get his butt inside so he does not go and run through a fence because he so will. And he heard me and came running in and I shut the gate right behind him. After more running, Zoro got tired and started to graze, and I needed to dump a bag of feed into his barrel because it was getting low, so that is what we are doing here. And then I go get that hay bag that's been hanging there for a minute to get all the water to come out of the bottom that the hay did not soak up. I take this and go hang it up in scout stall and on the way I peek at Zoro, make sure he's not doing anything crazy out there and that he's just grazing and then I go into scout stall and find a good place to hang this bag for him to snack on throughout the night. ready to come in here he is coming all the way up to me to the gate for me to grab him I guess that I had given Chester alfalfa so he doesn't immediately go to his hay bag he instead begs me for food and I give him a succeed they both love it so much and he's kind of weird about tubes so I put it in his feed bowl for him to lick it up and if Chester wasn't eating alfalfa he would let me just put the tube in his mouth but instead I put it into his corner feeder for him to find later he also loves loves his succeed make sure Zoro's still good and then I decide to so kite and scout some alfalfa I love alfalfa I think it it really helps hold muscle on them and I like to soak it again for these two to get more water in them. Kite doesn't drink a whole lot so I just like to know that he is at least getting some water. I don't put as much alfalfa in each bucket but the process is exactly the same. I hose it down and let it sit for a little while to soak up that water. Kite was very ready to come in, so while those two buckets soaked, I went to get him, and he was so nice and walked all the way up to the gate for me, so I didn't have to go chase him out there in the pasture.
it's a little windy so we do shut the gate because I don't want it blowing around everywhere. Once he was in his stall, I had to put his cribbing collar on because he's an addict and he really gets mad at me for putting this thing on and makes it as hard as possible for me. Zoro was standing at the gate ready to come in, so I went and grabbed him to put him up. After I get Zoro in his stall, I bring the alfalfa for Kite and Scout, and Kite was very excited and almost would not let me get in there before he would take the bucket from me, but I managed to get it dumped on the ground for him. He had a little hard time finding it, so I had to help him out a little bit. I think his vision in his old age is not as good as it once was, but here he is happily snacking, and here is Scout waiting patiently for his alfalfa that he is dying to eat. I peeked into Kite's feed bucket and like Zoro, he needed more feed so I go take a wheelbarrow, throw a bag of feed in there and wheel it all the way down to the back hallway where Kite's feed barrel is. When I'm done with that, I go to grab Zoro a flake of hay for him to snack on. Now it is time to get those boots up in the trailer and the wind was obviously not my friend today, but I got him, rolled them all up, and put him on my trusty Velcro, and that was my barn day today. That was all I did. Thank you so much for coming along with me in this vlog. If you want to be shouted out in my next video, all you have to do is subscribe, turn on your notifications, and comment below to tell me that you did for a chance to be shouted out in my next video. Okay, bye!